What's going on Reef Builders? It's Saturday afternoon and I'm here in the studio and I wanted to just bring you along on just uh, I guess an, a micro update here at the studio for a handful of cool things we have going on and uh, right now I'm about to put some of the first frags from Worldwide Corals that I've been holding on to for several weeks into the flagship reef. So let me show you what the flagship reef is looking like. This thing is it's ready, it's ready. I mean, it's been cycling uh, for quite a while right now and it doesn't really, really need it. And doesn't really need it, but man, it's just such a beautiful glass box display. The rocks are all clean. It's been over like two or three months and we're just now starting to see a little bit of coralline, a little bit of spotting, almost. I mean, there's not one imaginary piece of hair algae inside this reef tank and uh, man, it uh, sits right there next to my desk. So I am absolutely ready to put some frags in it. But before we move on, we need to discuss our first real loss here at the studio. As you may have noticed, Butters, the big yellow tang is no longer with us. Uh, he never was super vigorous about being an aquarium fish. He never ate, you know, like he really, really wanted to. I put him in here, um, hoping that it would be uh, um, just kind of a better environment for him. And he just never really took to it. And after about five or six months of, uh, of being here at the studio, being in the tank, he, uh, he just stopped eating and he started getting really, really skinny. I did everything I could to try to entice him to eat, including um, even like live algae. And so let's just take a moment for butters. Okay, so enough of that, but you might notice that I have some different, some different beautiful, beautiful pet fish in here. And this is one of my dream fish. This is a pair of Tinker's Butterfly. I am actually totally doing this tank the opposite of what I would normally do uh, for a reef tank. I would normally put in all the corals and then uh, worry about getting some cool fish later. But uh, you know, this is just uh, the opportunity came along and Hawaii's been super wishy-washy about uh, um, you know, whether it's legal or not to permanently uh, you know, collect fish from there. So I figured I'd get to one of my holy grail fish, a pair of beautiful, beautiful Tinker's butterfly fish. We're gonna have a lot more to say for, about those, but definitely want a big shout out to uh, TSM uh, Corals for getting those fish and quarantining because their quarantining is uh, next level compared to uh, I think what a lot of other people do, but we're gonna have a complete other video about um, those protocols. So, so this is the reef tank. Um, I will put the link down in the description below so you can uh, kind of get a refresher on what this tank is about. It's a water box, um, roughly about uh, the, the dimensions of a 180 gallon tank. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to say about it? Let me show you just a couple things. So to this morning, I actually went on a workshop and created my first bonsai tree. Now, this is very similar to some of the stuff that we do in aquariums, but one of the things that I thought was really cool was the workshop uh, setting. The workshop setting was neat, and I was, uh, it made me wonder um, if reefers would be interested in participating in a workshop. It'd be super low key here in person at the studio for locals or people who wanna fly in. So let me know in the comments what you think about a, a real life reef aquarium workshop. All right, so I've showed you my, my new bonsai. We've got the flagship reef here, and I wanna show you the corals that I'm gonna put in the flagship tank. But before that, we've got a couple delicious toys to start working on. So the Alcatronic's actually been here for a little while. Um, the thing is I can't just install it. I gotta, I gotta install it and put it in a place where it's just gonna look beautiful and it's gonna be accessible. And then the Dostronic just came in so I can use these two together uh, to get complete uh, water chemistry management. It only tests alkalinity but it uses ratios of calcium and magnesium with the alkalinity test to dose those other parameters. So uh, definitely gonna have some updates on those. I'm very much looking forward to having some automatic uh, chemistry action here at the studio. But what I really wanted to show you is 
this amazing, this beautiful assortment of, of corals that I've been sitting on from uh, Worldwide Corals for a little while. Let's see what we got here. I'm trying to get my setting straight. So everything here on this first row, this first row, this is all some stuff that I got from Worldwide Corals um, about three weeks ago. And I've just kind of been waiting for the, the flagship reef tank to get completely, completely ready. Um, as you might tell, this is pretty much just white lighting here. Um, I'm very excited about the soft corals just because they don't get nearly enough attention. And uh, let me see if I can remember what all these corals are. So right there in the center is a Worldwide Corals grafted cap. This tank has been um, really dim for a little while, so it's gonna brighten up in the other tank. Then we have the, uh, the Sunfire grafted cap. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer on that one. There we go. All right, there we go, a little bit. Um, we've got the Sunny D's. This is a classic, classic aquarium zoanthid right there. Um, some neon green Cinularia. And then there's another Cinularia here that I really, really like. This one's greenish with a little bit more of the brown polyps. This, I believe, is the AOI zoanthid. I thought it was like alien omelet or something. But I guess that's what AOI stands for, alien omelet. Um, uh, that is not the Bob Marley's. I don't know what the Bob Marley's are. Maybe, the, maybe those are the Bob Marley's. Not to be confused with the Rastas. Um, this one right here is a super cool strain. This one's actually a really unique strain from uh, Worldwide Corals. This is their, um, their Golden Pavona Maldivensis. Now, orange Pavona is pretty common, but honestly, I've only seen the, uh, this, uh, this golden yellow one from uh, Worldwide Corals. We've got a nice orange Leptostrea with the green eyes, which is gonna brighten up when I put in its tank. Um, kind of a classic candy coral here. Oh man, that thing is looking really nice and juicy, super clean. Um, another aquarium classic here is the green Stylophora, the green Stylo. We've got the uh, Frankenstein Micro, micro Favia, which I, I personally believe is a Goniastria. Oh, yep, there's also, there's also this uh, orange-tipped clove polyp. Really nice specimen. And then um, I did specifically ask for some, uh, some suspicularis and some xenia. So we've got some pom-pom xenia, some blue suspicularia, anthelia, definitely not going in the tank, and then some blue efflatornaria, just a really cool, subtle coral piece. So these corals here, mostly, uh, yeah, most of this right here, I'm gonna put over there in the flagship reef tank. So I just wanted to give you a kind of a quick and easy update on what's happening here at the studio. I'm very excited to put some frags in this tank. I think it'd be boring to just show you me putting the frags in, but I'm gonna put them in and we will come back around this tank as we uh, update all the stuff happening here in the studio. And one last thing to put in your ear is I believe Worldwide Corals is having the time splitter sale. They have uh, some kind of live sale happening right now on Reef to Reef. Uh, for this weekend only, I think the way it works is they put up uh, frags, several frags every single hour. And so uh, you have a chance to score some really, really nice corals um, every hour. It just really, really hit that fix. So check the description for that link. Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, I just wanna do a quick and fun little update on what's happening here at the studio. And I'll catch you guys again very soon.